I think we are recording. We'll see. <laughs> new version, new updates. Uh, all right. So, uh, welcome to the uh, Elect 101324W stands for Winter uh, Network Cabling. Um, I uh, this is probably one of my favorite courses to teach uh, because, uh, well, I have set this one up from scratch uh, and. Uh, um, and I'm actually quite uh, quite happy with this. Um, I hope you will be as well. It is called network cabling. However, uh, technically, I think personally, um, oh, uh, thank you, Jay. Um, yeah, it's recording. Okay. Uh, so uh, personally, I think this thing maybe should be called technically uh, infrastructure uh, systems or something like that. Uh, and you will know what I mean as, as, as we go along. I'll just give you a little bit of a preview of, of, of what this course is about. Uh, first, before we do anything, I'm going to call up a uh, course plan. Yeah. Just so we are, uh, you should see the course plan right now, right? It says course plan. I just want to make sure that I'm sharing the right screen here on this. Uh, good. All right. Uh, so network cabling, da 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 da. You can read that in this course. We will be working individual in teams. Uh, da da da. We'll be completing SOWs. What's SOWs? It's a terminology uh, that you will hear a lot when uh, when in service. Uh, in service, I mean uh, telecommunication type of service. Uh, where you perform new installations, uh, service calls, uh, or whatnot. Uh, well, basically, it will be a new installation or a service call. A service call is uh, uh, some sort of a repair of some sort. And SOW stands for scope of work. Um, And you will be uh, you will be dealing with that a lot now. Also, another thing you'll be dealing with is uh, something that's called deliverables, and uh, that's a documentation submitted upon of a certain task or project. Again, with this field of work, it's either new installs or or uh, service calls, and deliverables are an integral part of that. If deliverables are not complete properly then uh, you don't get paid simple as that so um uh and uh, we will spend a great deal on that uh later on uh, now also in this course all labs must be attended and completed in order to receive a passing mark same as the other course that we just had last semester um i'm going to say that just so nobody is surprised because um well just so we don't have to deal with some sort of ugly misunderstandings or something thereof. Uh, first, all labs must be attended and completed. Two, a passing mark for the average of all the labs must be at least 50%. Um, so that's the end. I'm not sure if you have studied digital electronics yet, so there'll be an end gate. It's not or, it's and. All right. So first, all labs must be done, and the passing mark for average all the labs must be fifty percent at least, and the average mark for the theory portion of this course also has to be fifty percent in order to pass this course. So there could be a situation that your average mark for the whole thing, theory and labs, could be ninety-eight percent, but if you haven't done one lab, then you can still fail the course. This is not this is not um, something that I invented or thought of. It's uh, it's uh, basically it's from the top, all right. So um, you know, in, in this case, I'm just a mark printer. You have the power of your mark uh, of what your mark is going to be. All right, um, labs. So first, we're going to have the deliverables now. I'm going to divide you into subsections. We have six sections, just like the last time. But now we're going to have section 1A and 1B, 2A and 2B, and so on. And you will be attending the labs bi-weekly, just like the last time. And I'll post a schedule on who comes when. 
right? However, next week, because not right now, it's the end of first week. Next week, just show up as scheduled, no subdivisions in sections. We are going to take care of the deliverables. Uh, so there will be no tools uh, put in use uh, this time. Uh, we will together, I'm going to start you up properly. Uh, I, I say, uh, uh, well, also with uh, Mr. Bailey and Mr. Habinski, uh, who are doing the labs for this course. We are going to start you up properly on the deliverables. Uh, we will walk step by step with you just to make sure that you're comfortable with the deliverables. Deliverables are, as I said, the documentation uh, upon completing any kind of task. In service, it's extremely, extremely important. All right, so by, uh, by us paying a great de uh, attention to the detail of you being comfortable with properly filling out and completing the deliverables, it's going to be so much easier for you when you enter the, 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 um, the work field. Uh, so you don't have to start learning the importance or, 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 uh, or, or, or making sure uh, that you um, complete the deliverables properly. All right. Uh, now, the way deliverables are completed will be different from one company to another. However, the one thing that, uh, that we need to uh, make sure is that following instructions to the T, exactly as asked, no creativity, please, just do as you're asked, and, uh, um, and everybody's going to be happy in which way. Uh, I mean that... Uh, if the deliverables are not completed as instructed by whoever employs you, then some of the deliverables might be rejected for, um, for, for fixing. Now, that delays payment or sometimes prevents it. Well, usually it delays payment. And some companies, well, sadly, uh, they are actually looking for mistakes so they can be, uh, they can delay your payments. All right. So, um, uh, that causes all kinds of chain reactions because uh, you know, their, your, your employer is not going to be happy and they're not going to be happy with the people who don't want to pay and uh, they don't want to be happy. They're not going to be happy with you because it's because of you didn't follow the instructions. So let's get this thing nice and, uh, uh, um, and settled so uh, you get into good habits once you uh, enter the workforce and that is going to make you that much more competitive um, with other people who compete for uh, for the same job, right? All right. So uh, so here's the first week. Uh, then we're going to okay. What's this lab schedule? All right. So sub C already have this schedule here. Subsections A, subsections B. Now we're going to. Um, uh, the only thing is that I'm going to post the names of who is in which section. All right. This course plan is already posted in the, where are we here? Um, that's not it. Homepage. There we go. If you go to, okay, I'm going to make myself look like a student. View as a student. All right, so we go content. And here's course outline. And course outline has two parts. Parts one is the course outline, and the other one is the course plan, which is what I'm displaying right here. You can download that, but you know already that from last uh, from last semester. All right. Um, all right. So that's as far as that. What else do I have for you here? We have lots, oh, lots of goodies uh, today. Um, the PowerPoint. We got that. Uh, all right. Let's start the proper lesson here. Introduction to telecommunications. Okay. Um, all right. Telecommunications. Does anybody know what this is? It's a very important thing to know if you are in tele <laughs> telecommunications. Does anybody know? Can anybody name the movie? That this thing comes from nobody 
Wow. Okay, I'll leave you with that. Tell me next time we see each other. I think next class we're going to have is going to be in person. Whoa, there you go, Trent. The Blues Brothers. There you go, bonus points for you. You passed the course. You don't have to show up. No, just kidding. All right, cool. Telecommunications. What is telecommunications? Telecommunications is communication over a distance. Uh, we humans, as we evolved uh, for thousands of years, uh, well, uh, some of our strongest things is being able to communicate, and we have invented all kinds of things, uh, you know, from uh, drumming the tum tums. Uh, to hand signals, shouting, uh, leaving um, various marks on land uh, and whatnot, on walls, graffiti, if train goes by, I can see all kinds of communications. I just don't know what it means and for whom it's meant to be. Uh, we have done pigeons. We would send homing pigeons and all kinds of things, stage coaches, uh, post office, letters, uh, then couriers, well, riding couriers and whatnot. The mile boots. Uh, uh, study where the mile boots come from. What is it? Nine mile boots or something like that, or eight mile boots, whatever it was called. Uh, but uh, you know, it has something to do with the communication as well. Uh, now, uh, the big breakthrough uh, was when the telegraph was invented. Uh, I would encourage you to listen to Dire Straits, The Telegraph Road. It's a beautiful song, but aside from that. All right. So, telegraph was invented, and whoa, that was a huge thing that, uh, that uh, swept the earth because you could instantly sent a message to someone who's miles and miles away that was that was a huge deal just remember uh, if uh, if you wanted to communicate with someone who lives far away uh, you would have to wait weeks before you hear the answer and now instantly you get the answer you say hello and the other one says i don't want to talk to you there you go communication right <laughs> uh, so uh, then telephone was uh, then the next thing was telephone and the whole thing just snowballed, and right now we, everybody has a cell phone in their pocket. And I don't know where this thing is going to uh, take us, but, uh, but I think it, we're not done yet. All right, so by which means, one of some most popular means of communications that uh, we had uh, so far, uh, right, okay, email, fax, uh, well, not too many people use fax right now, but still some facilities, some institutions still insist that uh, you actually send a fax because supposedly it's more secure. Really? Yeah, okay. Uh, POTS. POTS stands for Plain Old Telephone Service. Uh, this is the most basic telephone service that uh, could exist. Basically, it's a telephone line installed by a telephone provider. It's the hardwired line. VoIP. Now, VoIP is voice over IP. That's the next uh, biggest thing right now that's happening. A lot of companies are switching from POTS to VoIP, uh, primarily to, to save money. Uh, VoIP costs one third of what POTS costs because VoIP goes over internet and POTS has to be hardwired. So uh, if you're a huge company and has, you know, you pay for 200 telephone lines going into your facility, then you divide that by three, and that's you have to pay what you have to pay for service when you're using VoIP. Then it's a big savings, just the money. But then uh, the convenience of using it uh, it also goes you know, much higher than, uh, than than using POTS. All right. However, POTS is more reliable than VoIP. Well, less things to go, less to, less things to break than the VoIP. All right. Well, there's always pros and cons to having video conferencing, radio and television. That are some of the older ones. Consider not considering that uh, you know what we have now, internet and intranet. What's the difference? Internet is the world wide web. Intranet is the well, building wild web, right? uh, or facility wild web, or company wild web, and others. These are my favorites. Right? So okay, uh, let's keep going here. All right, so let's just analyze quickly uh, the signal chain of any kind of communication system. Uh, in, within any kind of communication system, you're going to see these elements, and sometimes they would be embedded within 
the, 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 um, within themselves. Right? I'll, I'll show you what I mean uh, by the last one of the last slides of this module. All right, so we go from input transducer through a whole bunch of stuff, and we go to the output transducer. What's before that, and what's after that? Well, okay, let's see here. <clears throat> um, let's let's consider this Zoom uh, conference that we have here. What's here? This is me. I am here. This is I. I have my mouth, and my mouth is talking. It's being picked up by an input transducer, which is a microphone. My input transducer here is a microphone. Right. What's a transducer? It's something that sounds really, you know, kind of complex, kind of technical terminology. Transducer is a device that converts one form of energy to another. So what kind of energies are we talking about here? The energy of vibrating air causing by my mouth is converted into electrical signals by a transducer, which in this case is a microphone. Another type of transducer would be a temperature sensor. A temperature sensor would be sensing the energy of the air, which manifests as temperature, into electrical signals as well. So. In this case, is a microphone. And then here's a whole bunch of processing equipment. Um, well, mixing board, graphic, well, graphic sound card, my PC, and then uh, the modem. And from the modem goes through a link. Now, link could be wires or it could be air. Right? In our case, it's wires. Well, fiber optics, copper wires, whatnot. There is more than one wire that this, my voice goes through before it gets through your ear. Where is your ear? Right here. That's where your ear is. This is where my mouth is. This is where your ear is. All right. And then uh, after uh, the signal is being transmitted through all kinds of linkages, it gets to the processing equipment, and it then, which being and is being served to towards the output transducer, and output transducer could be something that's called a loudspeaker. A loudspeaker is a speaker. Right? It's just called loudspeaker, uh, or headphones or whatnot, and it transfers one form of energy to another. Well, it transduces one form of energy to another. It changes one form of energy to another, which would be electrical signals into the longitudinal waves of the vibrating air, which, you know, sound waves, basically, right? And of course, uh, there would not be a great Zoom session if there was no telephone ringing in the background. All right, this is the things of the times. All right, okay. Someone pick it up, please. I can't talk. All right, there we go. Now I can. All right, so now we have the signal chain of any that's the most basic signal chain of uh, and we're going to start off of a transmission system and we're going to study things one by one um some more than others all right now transducer well, we're just taking these things apart converts energy from one to another examples microphone a loudspeaker antenna oh look at that antenna um antenna converts electrical energy into electromagnetic waves and vice versa because you could have a transmitting antenna and you could have a receiving antenna or you can have antenna that does both at the same time Ooh, right? uh, well sort of at the same time excuse me <coughs> all right uh, okay signal processor some of the examples uh, of that would be um well, it could be applied as a system or it could be applied individually depending on the purpose and situation. For example, here, as a system, here is the uh, mixing board. Very simple, small mixing board. It has, it serves as a system, right? It combines a bunch of different signals and it combines into one, let's say, maybe stereo output, right? Or maybe it could be a mono output, right? Uh, so, audio mixing console collects multiple signals and combines them into a single output signal. Radio transmitter, there you go, here, generates 
radio frequency which is applied to the antenna it's a signal processor now here's a wireless access point WAP WAP uh, generates uh, wireless digital signal in computer networking applications and this one is considered bi-directional and so is this here now that could also be I don't, you know most of the things can be bi-directional uh, microphone a microphone could be bi-directional it's not meant to work as such however if you have a microphone let's for example sure sm57 that's one of the most popular uh, sorry sure sm58 uh, one of the most popular microphones you connect that into the headphone output of your Walkman or whatnot and put it to your ear. You're going to hear the sound coming to your ear from the microphone, right? Or sometimes speakers, loudspeakers, they can be used as microphones. Example, school PA systems. Now remember those uh, speakers that are on the wall in your classrooms? There is no separate microphone. That speaker... Uh, is used as a speaker or loudspeaker and as a microphone except uh, it's being controlled which direction of the communication goes by the receptionist uh, receptionist pushes the button it's called push to talk button and the receptionist speaks to the class when they release the button then the situation reverses the speaker acts as a microphone and, uh, and uh, the receptionist can hear what's being said in the class there is no any other devices there. There's just that one 8-inch speaker. <clears throat> All right, transmission link. Uh, we're going to study some of those. Uh, we'll basically distinguish three types, three basic types. Air or space, copper cabling, fiber optic cabling. We're going to spend some time on these two. Air, I'm not going to spend so much on that, uh, not in this course. But uh, copper cabling and fiber optic cabling, we are going to, uh, well, take good care of those two in this course. Uh, receiver, of course, same as the signal processor. Uh, could be a radio receiver, could be a audio amplifier. Right? Or, again, wireless access point, because it's a bidirectional device. All right, now, is there anyone that can tell me, who, uh, well, here's an example of a system. But can anyone tell me what type of a system could that be most likely? All right. I'm waiting for someone to respond. There's something that's almost like a dead giveaway. Pressure's on. DJ set up some mixing board. Yeah, there's some mixing board there. Yes. Uh, DJ set up. Uh, you're warm, but not quite there yet uh, recording studio um no not there yet there's one thing that's really really stands out da -da -da. should i play the jeopardy music or should i whistle it uh, okay, soundboard, yes, there's a soundboard involved in it, but the whole system, as it is connected, choir set up, that's the closest one that we got, all right, so here's the choir, so here's a dead giveaway, choir microphones, most likely, this would be a church set up, or as it's in, as it's called in the industry, house of worship set up, Huge industry, right? And just think about it, you know, churches always pay, because uh, how could they not? They request a service and they pay. Uh, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, now, can we see the chain, signal chain? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here would be the input transducer, microphone, or here, microphone. It goes in the signal processor, it's being linked through the cables and things are being outputted or sent out through the output transducers that's the whole point of this system uh into the speakers loudspeakers and in the many kind of different cases this would be a uh, this would be something that's called a 70 volt system uh usually 
connected in something that's called a crying room. So, uh, you know, if there's a church service and uh, somebody's baby starts crying and you can't listen to what the service person is saying, then uh, that mom with the kid can go into something that's called crying room and the kid can, you know, can cry all they want in that room and it's not going to be heard uh, in there. You know, but, uh, you know, mommy still wants to hear what's happening you know, and it's kind of behind the glass and everybody's happy, right? So here's the speakers that are placed in the quiet, in the, in the cry, uh, crying room, all right? Then there could be some monitors, so-called stage monitors, uh, so people who um, are speaking on the, you know, in the outer area or stage area, staging area there, they can hear some feedback of what they're saying, of what other instruments are playing or whatnot. And this maybe this will be the main speakers and there could be some signal processing. Now, so here is the input processing, link, uh, output processing and output transducer, but there could be a mini system, a mini chain signal within. Here's the wireless mic. All right, so my wireless microphone is connected with the wires to the transmitter pack, then uh, the signal is linked to the receiver through the link that's air that is being processed and it's being sent out to the mixing board. So that whole system, whole chain, signal chain is present in just one of these, right? Um, right, so um, now if uh, I've, I have installed a lot of these, uh, there is money in it. I mean money. Uh, the purpose that we want to be employed uh, is to support ourselves uh, in a way that uh, we can earn money and earn living. Uh, it's not to be greedy, but uh, that's what we need. All right. So uh, if somebody is interested in doing that kind of stuff, talk to me. I've done it for many years. Uh, I can give you some good pointers. Um, and I can set you up with things. Anything, in fact, anything that I'm showing you here, I've done. All right. Uh, all right. We keep going. Now, we're going to see what's involved. Let's see how we're doing with times, with the time. Oh, we are doing really good. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Structured cabling. See, I would call it structured cabling or structured systems. What's involved in this thing? Um, some of the, um, well, as I explained to the class before that we had in person at, uh, earlier on today, uh, you're getting some pretty good chunk of knowledge when you're in our college. Well, almost became a poet here. However, uh, you're getting the, you know, you have to learn the Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws, and superposition, Thevenin's, and whatnot, the, you know, AC theory, DC theory, digital electronics, and whatnot. You all absolutely have to have that knowledge. However, you're not going to get in a situation, as I keep saying to everyone all the time, <coughs> is that uh, you know, when you come to work and uh, you're going to see, okay, so what's on the plate for what's on plate for today? Um, and the service calls installations. Oh no, no, today we're going to uh, we need to solve a couple of Ohm's law equations. Okay, you're not going to have a situation like that, but you will have a situation that will be sent to a situation like this, and you're going to be asked to make sense out of that. Now, this here, um, some years ago, uh, you're going to have situations like that. Some years ago, I was sent to uh, uh, say, okay, well, um, I finished one installation or service call or whatnot, and I received the phone call from the main, uh, you know, from the main office of wherever I was employed. Uh, can you go and identify uh, one more service call? Can you identify a phone line at uh, one of the Tim Hortons restaurants? Uh, they gave me the address downtown Toronto somewhere. So off I went, and what do I see? <laughs> I see this, all right? Yes, it's a Tim Hortons, but it was uh, in the process of being built, uh, so or renovated, uh, got it from inside out, uh, and brand new equipment was installed, including the you know walls and everything. So um, I had to identify the telephone line and secure it and prepare it so I could come back later on and install it when uh, things were ready for me. That's what you'll be getting paid for, right? You'll be getting paid for coming in situations like this. Uh, this is also, I think this is, yeah, this is from the same uh, place that I took picture. Uh, uh, you're going to see equipment racks like this. Now this is unacceptable, still works. But uh, and you're going to have situations like that all over the place, all the time. That you're going to, before you start doing something, you're going to have, you're going to, have to clean it up. So wiring hygiene is something that we're going to stress greatly. Um, 
while we are teaching you through this semester. Remember, uh, the term is called wiring hygiene. I think I invented that term. Or maybe not. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> Uh, so sometimes you're going to have to clean things up before you start doing, or you're going to have to let the client know, say, look, uh, this is an unacceptable uh, situation here that we're dealing with. I'm going to have to clean this thing up, and it's going to cost you so much. Otherwise, I'm not touching it, because if I breathe on it, something might change or something might break, and it's going to be my fault, and then I have to do it for free. So uh, sometimes you're going to have to uh, deal with things like that. All right. Now, data, right? I, uh, once you download this thing, you can click to watch, all right? It says click to watch. I'm not going to click to watch this one here, uh, but I encourage you to watch this. Now, what's this? This is a data wiring. Uh, this is a, well, semi-big project. How many, uh, how many wires are there? Well, uh, there's about 24 on the top strip. 24 so it's 48 cables here 48 48 48 48 48 cables again 48 48 <laughs> all right okay a lot of cables this is uh and um when you're dealing with installing data wiring uh, there are certain ways that we need to go about look first thing you can see is that there's a lot of velcro being used no zip ties here this is data cable data cable should be treated with extra care because any kind of deformation or any um, any smallest physical damage, it can compromise the signal uh, when we're installing data. All right, so that's one of those things. Now, usually, or not usually, quite often, you're going to have to identify some of the parts of the uh, of the equipment in the equipment racks, because quite often you're going to be sent to either uh, install new system, and you have to know sort of. We have to know where to put that thing in. Uh, you're going to have to be able to identify things that have to be replaced. Uh, you will be carrying a laptop with you with some peripherals, peripheral cables in order to uh, tap into some of the equipment. Now, don't be intimidated. You will not be doing this alone. Usually, when this, when you're going, you're going to be sent for a service call like this, you will be supported with a, uh, it was like a level two kind of a uh, tech support, <clears throat> which, um, and the people from that tech support, they are the people who have designed the system and they know all the passwords. Because you know, all, most of the passwords to, uh, to secure networks are temporary password. Today is one password. Maybe two hours later, it's going to be a different password. So you're going to have to call in. So what's the password of the day or what's the password at this moment sometimes? Or sometimes you're going to be on the phone uh, tapped in with uh, maybe a console cable or a, or a, or a RG45 uh, Ethernet uh, cable onto the equipment. Uh, maybe you are going to have to call up the uh, command prompt on your laptop, or maybe you're going to go through a, through a browser, uh, in, and, and you'll be on the phone with the, pe with the support people telling you what to do, because they don't want you to know everything, because some of the stuff is well protected. Some of the information is protected. Uh, so you know, don't be intimidated. If when I say, oh, you know, you're going to have to use laptop, that means, no, no, you don't have to know everything about everything. There's no one who knows everything about everything. But uh, this is the type of job. Uh, sometimes you're going to be installing the whole thing, and sometimes you're going to be adding maybe two more wires. Maybe sometimes you're going to troubleshoot a connection or so, or, or, or something like that. Or sometimes you're going to have to replace certain type of equipment because he's gone bad or whatnot. Right? So that's, the, that's what's involved in this type of industry. Um, <clears throat> what do they do? Oh, I clicked to watch. I don't want to watch. <laughs> I said I was not going to click. I was going to change the slide. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Slide is changed. What type of systems are we dealing with uh, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to this network uh, systems or uh, data infrastructure? Data, not just data cables, not just computer cables. Data could be considered anything. Telephone. Um, intercom sound um, access control let's see what here 
data infrastructure is some of the most popular. Everything runs on data. You can't imagine a building without plumbing, without working plumbing. It's not going to be considered as a dwelling unit or livable or enterable at all sometimes. Uh, so you have to have working plumbing. You have to have working electrical systems or electrical kind of networking um, well, electrical systems. You're going to have to have some mill work done. You have to have walls that are going to be painted and uh, whatnot. You can't imagine any functional building right now without some sort of a data infrastructure. Now, some of the buildings are going to have more complex or more complex uh, uh, data infrastructure. Like, uh, well, let's say if you go Toronto downtown, the financial district, you see some of those high rises. Those high rises have tons upon tons of copper wiring fiber optic wiring and whatnot they live and breathe with that stuff um <clears throat> so that what i'm trying to say is that there's a lot of work you if, especially if you go to some of the you know bigger cities like you know cities or um like gta greater toronto area you can be as busy as you want now you can work for somebody else or you can work uh, for um, for yourself you won't be able to work for yourself right away because you know, it would be a good idea to work for another, for another company at least for some time just so you know the ropes of things but uh, quite often if you know what you're doing uh, you can start your own business and you can support yourself that way you can do electrical things you can do data things I've seen people who were data technicians uh, or technologists, and they requalify themselves to be electricians. And I have seen things the other way. I've seen electricians uh, that went in just straight into data infrastructures. Uh, both uh, ways, uh, there's tons of work. You can be as busy as you want. All right, so now data infrastructure, telephony, well, telephone systems. Uh, telephony could be POTS, could be VoIP, um, for the most part. CCTV, closed circuit television system. And now when you, when you say CCTV, it has a little bit different meaning than some years ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago. 30 years ago, CCTV was, well, it is, closed circuit television system. Like, for example, in high schools, there would be a broadcast uh, class and they would, maybe every Friday, they would have a broadcast uh, news that they worked on for the whole week and they will have to present this thing to the whole school and it was done <clears throat> through the closed circuit television system a bunch of tvs in classrooms connected to equipment that lived in some sort of a room and uh, it was closed within the building cctv closed circuit television. now when you say cctv it mostly it means security surveillance <coughs> it will be this excuse me the security cameras right? oh security alarms Pretty much each of those is a money maker on its own. However, it's a good idea to know all of it because you never know what you're going to service. And with time, you will, if you decide to go into this field. All right, security alarms, nurse call systems, fire alarms, uh, PA commercial, simple all call systems, or PA sound systems. We'll go over those with the next, next slide. That's why I'm not stopping on those. Uh, access control. Uh, retail access control usually goes together with security alarms quite often. Right? Very popular in, um, let's say, real estate agencies. Like, for example, if you have a real estate agency that employs uh, or that uh, you know covers kind of maybe 80 or 120 associates, uh, then everybody has to have the key to the building. So that means you're going to have to have 120 keys cut physically if you want to give everyone uh, the key to enter. Now, let's see someone quits or someone gets fired. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are you going to do? Take the key away from them. How do you know if they didn't cut a copy of that? So you have to replace the lock. So you have to cut 120 more keys. Oh, wow. Okay, let's wait three days for that. Okay, good. Now, all right, two days later, another person got let. Okay, so... That's not a very practical system. However, if you have, if you use access control, which is the you know, uh, using the um, key fobs or access cards uh, uh, that are presented to something that's called a proximity reader that says by the door, and it opens, unlocks the door 24/7, and you can enter and uh, do whatever you have to do. 
if somebody quits or someone lets go, gets let go, all you have to do is deprogram their card and uh, there you go. They have no access. You don't have to do anything else with anybody else's card, right? So access controls are very popular. Uh, and quite often they go with the security alarms. Some security alarms have an integrated access control within their systems, right? Retail, that's a huge business. Uh, retail, it goes, uh, well, when I say retail, first thing comes to me, uh, to, to my mind, is POS, which says, uh, which stands, uh, well, it stands for point of sale. Uh, so point of sale is the cash register or the cash register assembly. Uh, that has to be installed. Things have to be wired. Uh, what does you know? PC has to be wired. Uh, anything you know, like a conveyor belt, electricity has to be connected. Uh, telephone has to be run. Uh, the money machine has to be connected. All kinds of things connected, installed, troubleshooted, uh, intercom, and whatnot. The whole thing has to be armed with uh, electronics. So retail, and then uh, a huge store like a Home Depot, Rona, or Lowe's, or Home Hardware. I just want to, you know, cops bill. I can I don't want to leave out anybody, but I can't mention all of them because it's impossible. Uh, but. Um, <clears throat> Let's say, oh, well, we need to add more, one more cash register. Uh, da, da, da. There's a new installation or a service call. Um, something goes wrong with one of the connect connections to one of the cash register. Uh, it gets sent. Troubleshoot. Quite often, it's just replacing of a jack. Uh, well, some of the menu boards, um, you know, the menu boards are the monitors that are behind the sales desk in some of the fast food restaurants uh, showing the prices of the products. These are called menu boards. They run on network. Sometimes, quite often, the connections are physically damaged uh, because they were maybe improperly installed or uh, not up to par. And when things are being touched, moved, when cleaning and whatnot, they are, um, sometimes they get, you know, they get damaged. So that's where you come in. Uh, sometimes uh, I would be sent from London here to Niagara Falls, uh, to one of the Tim Hortons restaurants, to uh, you know, troubleshoot uh, one of the menu boards. You get to pay for travel too, and sometimes they put you on the plane. So um, yes, you can you can do some traveling with this type of industry. Right? Now, what do you need for that? You need your working knowledge. What's involved? Working knowledge. Installation, setup, commissioning, service, design, sales. These are some of the key words. What's commissioning? Commissioning is, well, the other end of sales. First, you got to sell the equipment. Then you have to design, install, set up, and whatnot. And after everything is installed, you put on nice clothes, suit and tie, and you call everybody from the company and you do the commissioning, which is basically showing what you've done and showing people how to use the new system that you have installed, commissioning. Um, all right, data. Well, this is what you would look like uh, if you are using, if you are servicing data, working with data. Here's a young fellow that uh, is doing something to the equipment rack. Uh, is he doing some diagnostics? What's he holding? He's holding a laptop there. All right, he's connecting something, he's tapping in, and uh, maybe he's troubleshooting, or maybe he's setting things up to, uh, for a new installation. After things were being pulled, the racks have been installed, uh, cables terminated, tested, uh, and whatnot, data service. Um, a money maker on its own. You can, you can spend a whole life doing just that and be happy. Right? Telephony. Uh, telephony has gone through, well, a lot of transformation over the years. Now, on first plane, we have something that's called a POTS. POTS stands for Plain Old Telephone Service. This is the simplest form of a phone line, simplest form of a phone. It just has one pair. Uh, it's called tip and ring. Uh, we'll talk about what those are. So, um, and this is the simplest form of telephone. Some of them are still being used. Some of them will not be phased out in a long time when it comes to something that's called 911 phones. Uh, if you install any kind of complicated system, quite often you're required to install at least one POTS 
phone in the facility that bypasses, that the telephone line bypasses any kind of system. It just stands on its own. In case the power goes down, something goes wrong, the network goes off, you can still pick up the old telephone and dial 911 if you need to. Yes, everybody has the cell phone right now, but then again, the company that uh, employs hundreds of people, they can't assume that somebody's going to have cell phone, working cell phone, right? Now, you're going to have some you know, some of the proprietary systems, right? Which some like that. Some of us seen these uh, Northern Telecom uh, uh, or Nortel phones um, all over the place. You can still see them now, right? Now, this phone signal does not understand the pods. This phone gets plugged into a box on the wall somewhere that is called a telephone system, KSU, Key Service Unit, or PBX, Private Branch Exchange. And that box is connected to POTS lines or SIP lines if it comes to VoIP. We will also talk about what these are. All right. And then, of course, we're talking about VoIP, Voice over IP um, or Voice over Internet Protocol. Uh, now, this is the probably the newest and the latest when it comes to telephony. The, uh, the telephone lines are virtual telephone lines that are occupying some sort of bandwidth or space uh, on the internet, right? And then depending on how many equivalent of telephone lines your company needs, then you're going to get more or less bandwidth. Now, um, the cost of the operating cost of VoIP versus POTS is pretty much uh, one third of the price. It adds up if a company has 200 telephone lines and they pay 100 and plus dollars per, per line. Then if you divide that by three, VoIP is it, even if you have to cough up some cost for switching the phone systems at the start. CCTV surveillance, um, well, it's a very popular thing these days. Um, you can also be really good at it and you can make a living out of that. Security alarms, another thing. Um, well, this is what some of the, this is the, one of the more modern keypads for security alarms. Uh, done it, uh, done all of it, all right? If, if something ap kind of appeals to you when I'm going through these, talk to me, all right? I'll set you up with, uh, with some suggestions and uh, maybe I'll tell you where the distributors are and who to talk to and whatnot. Uh, nurse call systems. Nurse call systems are the buttons that are um, by the patient's beds in hospitals or uh, in nursing homes. Uh, all computerized, uh, all complex systems, there are different brands. This is Roland, but there's something that's called Duquesne as well, and there's Maxivox. Maxivox is out of Montreal. Duquesne is out of states. Uh, I think it's St. Charles, uh, um, somewhere in the states. And Roland, I wonder if it's a Canadian or, uh, or American company. Uh, there are some of the major players, right? Uh, fire alarms. Fire alarms. Um, Yes, that's also uh, part of the modern telecommunication, sort of. However, fire alarms require extra licensing if you want to be a fire alarm technician. If something like that appeals to you, again, talk to me. I'll set you up with the right channels, and then you can take on your own to approach them. All right? Our college does offer fire alarm technician, uh, of course. Uh, school PA systems, uh, we mentioned that, so uh, that's part of the sound system slash data installations. Uh, church systems, we already covered that. There's a, there's a whole industry, whole big companies selling church sound systems and church organs, just so you know. See, you can see a couple of guys uh, setting up the church organ, and these are the tone chambers. There's tone chamber one, tone chamber two. There could be pipes in there or there could be speakers. These are big rooms. Now, if things are properly set up, you won't know if things are covered, whether these are pipes or speakers. That kind of a system quite often costs anywhere from, you know, eighty to $200,000. Right? So you can just tell how much uh, money is in the church systems. Uh, all right, distributed audio. Every facility has to have every every commercial facility has to have some sort of ways of communicating to the people who are inside that well, 
please get out, there's fire, or this is a test. Uh, you can remain, uh, wait for further announcements, or things like that, right? And there are specific ways of installing such systems, right? When we go through audio, stage audio. Now, stage could be a portable stage, good old rock and roll type of a stage. Um, been there, done that. Uh, <clears throat> you can be a roadie, uh, and it's fun for some years. Uh, then later on, you want to get out of it. Uh, um, theater. Theater is nice, because uh, well, if you're lucky to get a job as a sound technician in some of the most prestigious theaters, then it also could be a lifer, right? Um, good thing about that is that uh, every day you wake up, you go to the same place to work. Right? You don't have to travel, and if you find yourself a place to live close by, all the better. Right? Access control, we talked about that. And retail. Retail, retail, retail. Every POS, every station, every situation here has a wire. Where do those wires go? Usually they go up, not these pipes, but uh, they could be maybe under the ground pipes. Or there could be something that's called a jiffy pulse or pack pulse. Like, for example, there's one here. Um, I don't see one here. So this could, this could be under, on the ground somewhere or on the ground. They go up to the ceiling, and they're being routed wherever they are. Right, uh, a lot of usually, if you do any wire pulling uh, in any of those uh, situations, then um, you're going to have to do well, things at night. So that's the thing that was not my favorite part of the retail, big retail business, because sometimes you have to drive with the scissor lifts or boom lifts and whatnot, and you just couldn't do that when the store is open. And that's basically what POS looks like. Quite often, the things are being shipped to you on a skid. Uh, let's say the store has six POSs, and the whole thing is being shipped in parts. You have to put things together, install them, mount them to the thing, uh, set things up, connect them, test, verify, blah, 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 blah. Um, lots of work, lots of work. And uh, if you play your cards, uh, it could be a good paying job as well. could be quite good, quite well paid job. Uh, now, I'm not going to say things on, uh, on because I'm going to be posting this thing on, the, on YouTube. But next time I see you, please remind me uh, to explain to you how is it that if you go on your own with this type of business, you can run a considerable business, well, well-oiled machine well making money business uh out of the trunk of your of one car and you could be living in an apartment building right? if you play your cards you won't be living in an apartment building for so long for too long right <clears throat> but uh please remind me to explain that to you right? and this would this was the last slide now uh please i'm going to uh, please uh come to the labs as scheduled and then after this next week we're going to split into sections and you're going to be doing sec those labs bi-weekly but we're going to do two labs per session instead of one and the other alternate week uh you're going to have to use that time for prep for the preparation and those videos that i'm posting you're going to have to watch in order to be comfortably uh, situated in the class. All right. Mm. All the rest will come later. Any questions uh, so far? I know I talked a lot. No? All right. Hey, guys and gals, it was nice seeing you again. Uh, well, virtually, but I can't wait to see you in person. And uh, till next time, I will see you when I see you, as I always say. Thank you, guys. Bye.